Hi, my name is Ryan Navarro and I'm an Applications Engineer at Hawkridge Systems. In this video I want to show you the basics of programming for a CNC lathe using CAMWorks. So we'll be programming using the 2-axis turning module of CAMWorks which would be appropriate for something like a single turret CNC lathe. And here we'll see I have a SOLIDWORKS part loaded up. Relatively simple geometry, but as a reminder this doesn't have to be a SOLIDWORKS part with SOLIDWORKS features, it could also be an imported body from another CAD software. And I've already got CAMWorks turned on, so I've got my CAMWorks feature tree and CAMWorks command manager tab. But notice I'm still using a mill machine here, so I just want to double click to switch over to my uh, turn machine or lathe. Okay, And these machines you see listed out will be determined by the modules of CAMWorks that you have in your licensing. And when it comes to a lathe, we have some different options here. So in my tool crib, I have a similar tool crib to my mill, except I have things like my tool holders and inserts specified here okay instead of my mill tools we have post processing and posting tabs as usual and we have this additional chuck tab where we can actually control the setup uh, of our lathes chuck once our machine information is defined I'll go ahead and look at my stock so we can see for my lathe my stock is defined cylindrically and I can control offsetting material in different places if I want okay we can have cord stock if we want to and these other options we have here are for things like if we want to specify some odd shaped stock we could do that using a revolve sketch using an STL file or using another SOLIDWORKS part file to define as our stock. Once I have my stock defined I can choose whether I want to start adding features manually or perform the automatic feature recognition by allowing CAMWorks to extract any machinable features from this part. So let's run automatic feature recognition and we'll find that CAMWorks does a really good job on these turning parts of finding the individual features. So we have a face feature, an OD feature, a groove, and a cutoff feature all within one turn setup. So we'll generate our operation plan as well as generate toolpath for those operations and now we're basically assigning all the default cutting strategies from our CAMWorks technology database to those features. So we have default strategies set up to rough finish both on the OD and for our grooves here and then finally cut off the part at the end there. Okay and you can see maybe I don't have enough stock protrusion so I could go back to my stock manager and add a little more stock to the back, regenerate my toolpath and now my cutoff operation will be clear of my chuck. Now if we want at this point we can actually simulate this toolpath and see these cutting operations in action here. So we'll see our facing, roughing and finishing, and then our turning, roughing, in multiple passes, and then we'll see our turn, finish, pass after that. So we're still in the roughing stage of our turn operation. And then here comes our finishing pass, and the grooving, roughing and finishing, and then our part off. And by the way, all these colors we see for these different types of cuts can be adjusted in your display options. And of course, even though all these operations are generated automatically based on those defaults in the database, we can go in and adjust anything that we want. So I could double click my turn rough operation here and I'll see just like in my mill, I get a preview of my insert and my holder. So I can look specifically at the insert if I want to, see if maybe I need to use a smaller radius or adjust my insert angle. I can look at my holder and change any of my insert orientation. And I could of course pick a different tool for my tool crib. On the roughing tab I can control my cut amounts for my um, different depths of cut. I can turn on can cycle support if I want and control the allowance which is the material I'm leaving over for my finishing pass and I could have multiple finishing passes if I want to or I could cut straight to the true shape uh, with just one pass with my roughing pass by removing this allowance. Okay, And we have all the similar controls for our clearance retracts and lead in lead outs that we would find in the milling package and just remember that anything we see on any of these tabs can be customized and saved back to a strategy so you don't need to be going in and changing these operations each time. Um, you'll go through the first couple parts of your program, adjust these parameters, and then save them back to strategies, save them back to your database so that you can easily apply those strategies. Okay. And if we want to take a look at defining a feature manually, so all these features we defined automatically here on our feature tab, 
I can always right click on my turn setup and define a new turn feature and then we'll kind of see what's happening behind the scenes Gameworks is actually looking at what's essentially a cross section of this part so we have a plain section value right here and we can see these different lines that I can select that represent um, the cross section of my part so I'm not trying to program you know on the whole geometry just on this cross section select one of those lines there and then I can specify the type of feature I want so maybe we want to thread that boss I'll go ahead and change my strategy here to threading and when I click OK it'll actually generate that threading operation for me but I just want to point out that um, we're intelligently looking at the cross-sectional profile of this part so it doesn't ha this isn't a SOLIDWORKS sketch this is automatically happening based on the geometry that's underlying and we can control how that cross-section is created if we want to we have a couple different options for that but here let's just create our thread feature Okay, and we'll see it generate in down here. And I can go ahead and look at the thread size it's choosing. If I look at my parameters, okay, we can see some of the characteristics of this feature. And we'll see the thread sizes it's choosing here. I could override these with some custom thread size if I want. But I'll click OK and generate that feature. Generate the operation plan. We'll see it gets placed below my cutoff feature. So I just, just make sure my order of operations is correct here. I can always drag that above my cutoff feature and then generate that threading toolpath. So now if we simulate, we should actually see the actual threading that's happening in real time. So there's our threading passes. And of course, everything that we're doing here is associative to the model. So if we had to go back to SOLIDWORKS and make any changes, because CAMWORKS is integrated, all our toolpath would update automatically based on those changes. And once we're happy with our program, we can go ahead and post-process it out to G-Code. So I hope this video was helpful for you to understand a little bit about CAMWORKS turning. And it's really very similar to our milling modules um, just brought over to CNC lathes. So thank you for watching this video.